Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Hey everyone, I know these have been out on the market for quite some time, but I actually just received them. These are Broadway Limited's P70 coaches. In other words, they're passenger coaches that are 70 feet long. Oddly, my father was the Pennsylvania Railroad guy, not me. I don't specifically follow them, but they have so many locomotives that are just really kind of interesting and kind of cool. I buy them because I don't care what road I run. I just buy what I find nifty and interesting. I'm basically an overgrown raccoon. The reason that I purchased these is because I had a Broadway Limited Pennsylvania Q2 that has the pulling power of an anemic hermit crab. It's heavy, has quite a few drivers, and you would think it would pull a lot, but it doesn't have any traction tires, and it just won't pull any consist that I tried to put behind it. So I keep purchasing consist to try to put behind it, and all of them are too heavy. So I'm like, all right, I'll try these, and these are what I got. I don't know if they're temporarily correct. I don't know if the Q2 ever pulled any kind of passenger because I really don't care. I just like things to look a certain way and these hopefully will match up. In the box, it looks like you're gonna have direct draw bar connections. So it's, I'm not entirely sure why they did that for these, uh, but if you want it really close coupled, I assume these would be a good idea. I don't know much about these in real life, but I just noticed this retailer was selling four two packs of somewhat temporarily similar cars, so that's what I bought. And I didn't realize there was they were slightly different. The roofs are different colors, but that's okay with me. I really don't care about that. These are the 1931 to 1937 appearance cars, and I guess what distinguishes them from the other ones are the fact that these have kind of these olive drab um, details, the the roof and the trucks and the underbody versus black ones. Uh, right out of the box, I, I just had a horrible feeling about this green plastic. It looks really bad. It looks really terrible. I mean, the color's fine. If this is what the color looks like, that's fine. But it looks like kind of the cheap, uh, I guess, army figure plastic. It's, it's really off-putting, and it doesn't look good at all. There's a really strange way it doesn't match up with the color of the actual car body itself. I you may be able to see it here. That's fine if you disagree, but to me, it just looks really wrong. All right, the other ones here are black roof. Um, they're a slightly different time period. They're all exactly the same as far as I can tell, except for the roof color is different. Um, and these ones are the non-AC version with the exposed electrical conduit. But the black roof looks notably better. It's more tolerable, but they still have these olive drab underbodies. Ugh, I, it's not just I don't like the color. It's the color just doesn't look right. The plastic doesn't look right. It may be one of the few times where I'm going to have to go in myself and either repaint these or weather them so it's not so noticeable. Truly, truly yucky. I, I don't know how else to put it. Just doesn't look good at all. Another thing that's off-putting about this car is that you can see the electrical pickups, uh, you know, behind the trucks really easily. You know, details like this, the end gate looks really nice, but I mean, you can clearly see the electrical strip in there. Speaking of trucks, these things derailed a lot, and I mean a lot. And yes, I don't have the greatest track, but I just, I've never had a series of cars derailed this much. It was, it was pretty incredible. And these things seem to be derailing in all kinds of places that I've never had problems before. And the, the reason why is these do not have much lateral play at all. In fact, well, they're actually very inconsistent, but they're very blocked. Um, I mean, you can see here, this one just doesn't want to move side to side very much. Now, one area this was okay is all the wheels that I tested were in gauge, which is kind of a surprise because my California Zephyr set had several that were out of gauge and then Broadway Limited charged me to replace them. I'm like, what? These are your screw ups to begin with. Why are you charging me for this? So, but luckily I won't have to go through that crap. These are okay. The culprit seems to be how tightly these, I guess that's a kingpin, fits into the receiving hole. They're really tight, and which is going to necessitate me either grinding down the kingpin along its circumference, or I'm going to have to bore out the hole. And I think probably the latter is going to be the better option. But the fact that I'm going to have to do this anyway on cars that I paid this much for is unconscionable. 
The amount of side-to-side -side motion is well known in trucks. You have to give it some play or it's not going to properly go over uneven track surfaces or over points. And this one here, look, it kind of goes a fair amount to one side but not to the other. This one kind of has the same problem. I don't understand why in 2022 we're still having these issues. I just I don't know. Between all these, I'm kind of put off by these cars, but I'm going to keep them anyway because they did serve their purpose my Q2 can pull these because they are relatively light and they have very light rolling resistance, very good rolling resistance. Let's go ahead and put these on the scale. And I haven't talked about the blue Comet car yet. What's interesting is I didn't even realize I owned some of these P70 coaches with these blue Comets, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Looks like we got 6.1. I'll pull it off just to make sure I got a good set. Yes, that's uh, 6.1 ounces, so a little bit under half of a pound, and I think that's 173 grams. Sorry, I didn't pull it out, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. And across those two, they're consistent. Of course, they're exactly the same cars with the electrical conduit and 6.1. So that's, that's it, 6.1. As far as the couplers, we'll check this out. This one looks fine. I can't see any problems with it. So I think we're in good shape there. But again, look at how much of the pickup strip uh, you can see. I just, I don't understand why they couldn't hide that behind something. Yeah, here's a close up of that if you wanna see it. Just, I don't know. I mean, they should know about these things before they go to market with any of this stuff. All these cars do have an interior, which is nice. And they actually seem to be pretty decent. They're, uh, I guess they would look like the burgundy velvet um, that was common in Pennsylvania, either that or leather. I'm not entirely sure since I'm not an expert on this particular genre. And these are lit from the factory with a capacitor. When I received these P70 cars, I'm like, oh, this is a new thing for me. I've never seen these before, but in fact, I have seen them before. I own the Blue Comet cars along with the Central New Jersey Blue Comet locomotive offered by BLI. And I never actually realized that these were the same cars. I didn't realize that these were the P70 cars. I knew that the Blue Comet cars weren't prototypical to the original cars used in that train, but since I wasn't interested in the P70 cars at the time, I didn't realize that, in fact, they were P70 cars and they just reused them. I think the thing that bugged me about the Blue Comet cars was the fact that they didn't offer an observation car. I thought the very least they could do was offer an observation car. And since these are kind of fantasy paint schemes, just sort of made by BLI to use these P70 cars, I really doubt that any kind of external observation car I'm going to get from another company is going to match up very well. So I probably won't do that. So I'm just going to run this consist without an observation car unless I can find like another set that's made of brass or someone else comes out with another one of these sets. Um, I'll tag those on. But yes, if you look, these are exactly the same with the same details. All the blue is a little, just like the black is a lot better. It, it just looks a lot better in here. I, I don't know what it is about that green. It just looks so bad, but it really does. It's almost like they didn't get anyone with any kind of real Pantone experience to see if they matched up or something, but these look fine. As I stated before, these are lit from the factory, which is something I think all premium uh, passenger car manufacturers should do. And here's a view of them. As you can notice, there are no hot spots, which is something I really appreciate, um, especially after having a lot of Bachmans where you can kind of see the glow from each of the light bulbs through. You can't see any of that, um, any kind of bleed through here. And what you're seeing here are all the cars laid down. So I have both the P70s and the blue Comet cars that um, are plopped down here. Now, one thing I only kind of half like about them, and you can't see it quite as well in this view, is that these lights are like lit in two separate areas, um, and the middle doesn't have anything. It's not as noticeable here. I'll try to turn down my exposure for you, but the light does look like it's coming out from these car in two columns. It's a little bit off-putting. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I think they could have done better. All right, that's what I've got for you today. These are nice. They're certainly not a home run, but they're certainly not a miss either. Um, I, I think they're going to do for what I need them to do. And that's roll with this Q2. My Q2, again, has just no pulling power whatsoever, so I wanted at least a reasonable length consist to pull behind it. And it will pull these, thankfully. But these cars are just kind of metaphorical for Broadway Limited in general. They're a great idea. You want them, you want them to do you know, what they're set out to do, but there's always something missing. And there's, it's just, again, I've stated in another video, but it's always something with Broadway Limited. My general happiness rule is three feet, but even at three feet, the green roofs on these, it, it looks bad. It just looks terrible. So I'm probably gonna end up um, painting them black and I'm gonna have to paint all of them black. 
so that the textures will match across all of them. And I'm not gonna touch the underside. I may weather them, but that's about all I'll do. I appreciate the factory lighting and um, interiors, but on the lights, maybe on some of the run through here that you'll see in a second, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, where it looks like there are two separate columns of light and then the center is kind of blank. These stiff trucks are kind of a tragedy though. I, I don't know what they were thinking. What's weird is my Comet car ones are about the same, but they don't derail, but these ones do fairly, the ones, the Pennsylvania ones do quite often. So that's gonna be a pain. I'm gonna have to do something about that. So in summary, if I don't have exactly a beer taste in my mouth, but I certainly don't have a champagne one either. I appreciate you stopping by. Hey, I can't thank you enough. If you like something about this, hey, click that button. If you want to leave a comment, I encourage you to do so. Do you have any experience with these cars? If you've had the same derailment problems, are yours just better than mine? And remember, I'm kind of cursed when it comes to this sort of thing. But yeah, I appreciate it. Take care and happy model railroading. And I will see you next time. Take it easy.